All right guys, so I have to admit that this section is the one I'm most nervous about because we're going to be talking about the J-Web interface. Now, we've seen the Juno CLI, but there are a lot of engineers, well, when I say a lot, I've only ever seen them using it on the SRX, which is the security platform, but there are a few engineers that would rather do the configuration with a GUI, and Juniper's GUI is called the J-Web. So let's have a look at our lab. Now, this is the lab we've actually set up. I can't actually seem to get J-Web operational, or I've actually never seen it operational on anything but an SRX. So rather than spending hours trying to work out how to get it operational on the MX platform, I'm going to do it on the SRX. So here's our SRX. I'm just going to start that up now. To be honest with you, I'm, I should have probably started that before the video. And even now I'm not actually going to start it because let me stop it. And the reason why I'm saying that is because to get the GUI, we need to have something to connect the GUI to. And that will be our Windows box. So let me start both those boxes there. And I might pause the video because this takes about three or four minutes to come up. Right, I'm hoping that's been enough time. And in the meantime, what I've done, let me just jump onto the Windows box. And on the Windows box, I've added an additional interface and given it an IP address. And you can see that I've given this additional interface an address of 10.1.1.1 with a slash 24 subnet mask. So let's now jump on our SRX, our virtual SRX, and we see Amnesiac. And we know that that means it's got a default config. It hasn't got any config. So we're just going to log it in. I probably won't be talking that much in this section because I'll just be doing the configuration. So we're going to set a host name and also a root password. Let's commit that first section. Now on these virtual SRXs, they do take a little while to commit, to be honest. I've seen it before take like 30 seconds for anything to happen. So there we go. There's no configuration under the interfaces. So let's do the interface configuration. The interface. I'll also have to do the packet mode where I have to turn it from being a firewall into a router. And to do that, I will have to reboot the box. We'll make the address 10.1.1.2.20-24. Let's do the packet forwarding bits. So first thing I'm going to say is delete security and then set security. I think it's forwarding options and for the family, I'll just do it for all families, MPLS mode packet based up hour do the same for isis which is iso and also the same for mm, oh because i've got mpls and the iso so i need to delete the mpls sorry all right so i've done something wrong there so set security forwarding options family oh i deleted mode family iso mode packet based yeah and also let's delete iso and put inet 6 mode packet based and also i'm going to set the system services and what this system services will do is it will enable us to be able to access the box through http or through a web interface basically so set system services web management HTTP and if I do HTTPS then I'm gonna to have to add a certificate which I will do system generated certificate I think that's all I need so let me do a show compare Wow lots of stuff that's because I deleted all the security on the box let's commit that we're gonna commit I'm gonna to have to reboot okay that's just telling us that we need to reboot I'm happy with that let's exit out of this and then just say request system reboot. And guys, if you want to get into the JWeb GUI, 
feel free. This is the way I'm, I'm hoping it works, to be honest. But this is the way I would go about setting it up. And then you could play around with J-Web to your heart's content. Now, for me, myself personally, until I do the security path for Juniper, I only need to look at J-Web to pass the JNCIA exam. After that, I'll probably never look at J-Web again. But this is good to get hands on. And if any questions come up, at least you have seen the J-Web operating rather than theory. And a lot of people um, say to me, a lot of my students say things like, why don't you just follow the books or why don't you go through the manuals? I try to do things that I find practical. So yeah, there are a lot of things in the book and the books and the manuals are excellent from Juniper, I have to admit. But sometimes you just need to get in there and get it done, you know? And this is what this course hopefully is leading you down that path. Okay, so we're back on, let's go, root. Let me just do a clear screen from here. Okay, now CLI. Um, doesn't look like the interfaces have come up yet. So show interface terse. No, you'll see a lot of messages, but what I can do just to, whilst we're waiting, I could do a continuous ping from the Windows box. If I jump on the command prompt and I say ping 10.1.1.2 minus T. So at the moment we're getting host unreachable. Lots of stuff came up in the background there. We're probably going to zoom in on the Windows box here. And when this Windows box starts responding, then we will know that the Junos box has come up or the interfaces on the Junos box have come up. Let me just show interface to us. Ah. Well, I'm pinging the wrong interface because I changed it to 20, so that would never have worked. So let me cancel that and change this to 20. Guys, I have a request from you. If you're enjoying the free content, I'm looking to increase my subscriber count to 4,000 subscribers by June. But I can only do that if you give me the play special. Do you want to know what the play special is? Press like and yeah, subscribe. Okay, back to the video. We go and we have a response from the the box now because we have a response and we've enabled http i should just be able to go into a browser and http into the jweb and log in with the root as a root user so let's go here if i just i'm not even going to say http i'm just going to say 10.1.1.2 it's taking its sweet time site cannot be reached all right, so let me try the HTTP in front then. HTTP. And also let me have a look at the system services. Did I do something wrong here? Edit. Show system services. Well, it certainly looks good. So now it's time to do some troubleshooting and find out what I did wrong. Why are we not able to actually get access to this box? <sighs> because I'm putting the wrong addressing, that's why. So let me put 10.1.1.20. That was a bit silly. Ah, and there we go. There's our JWeb access. All right, so let me now say root. And we have access to the JWeb, which is exactly what I want. And let's just have a little play around. First thing first, let's go to the dashboard and see what we've got there. We should have a graphical interface now we know that flash has gone now so can't do any installation of flash but i should still be able to see the box and the lights and the ports and the interfaces maybe maybe that will come up no it's not showing us anything and with that without flash it's looking a bit sorry for itself to be honest the jweb interface all right let's try and do a configuration and ping an interface or something like that so to configure, we go configure, interfaces, ports. This one should just be showing that we have configuration under GE000 and that interface is 10.1.1.20. Let's go under GE1. I've highlighted the interface. Let's scroll along and see what options we have. We can add. So under GE001, I'm gonna add a logical interface. That logical unit number will be zero. I'll make it called a test interface. 
give it an IP for version 4 address okay enable enable address configuration looks good add give it an IP address of oh, 7 dot 8.9.10 it'll be on a slash um, would 70 work 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 that would be 8 9 10, no so make this a slash 28 I think that will be it but okay we scroll up we see an okay button it says to do a commit we go to actions so this is actions we could compare let's do a compare yeah, for, so on the compare, it shows us that under GE0001 unit zero, we've added a description called test interface, and we've also added an IP address of 7.8.9.10 on a slash 28. Looks good. Let's commit that. So actions, commit. Looks like that's committing it. Success, beautiful. Let's also click on the troubleshoot tab. See what that's got there. If it's got anything interesting, scroll along. Oh, ping host. Let's try and ping our Windows host, which is actually the box I'm on, but I'm going to be pinging it from the actual GUI. So 10.1.1.1. What are the advanced options? The only difference I see here, it has a count of 10, whereas usually it will be like, a count of five or an unlimited count so let's see if that's okay let's start the ping the delays are extremely long okay so the round trip times are a bit long let's see how much they are actually from the box so run ping 10.1.1.1 they're not much better from the box itself so it's not what i would expect but still let's move on to the next section Question one, which web management option is used to access the JWeb platform? Question two, how can a user access the JWeb GUI? Question three, to enable management access, which branch or hierarchy should you be at? Question four, in the JWeb menu, which of the following offers a quick verification of the system status? Question five, what command is used to specify how the certificate is obtained to configure HTTPS to be used for JWeb? Question 